On today's podcast, I'm going to talk about <laughs> a faux pas in one of the auditions that I did this week, um, some of my knitting projects that I'm working on, and uh, I'm going to have a little rant slash complaining session about motivation and my lack of it. Hi everyone, I'm Troy. Um, if you're new here, uh, I am the creative behind Fox and Oak Designs based in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. And if you're uh, an old friend, hello again. <laughs> um, so let's just get right into uh, today's episode by talking about the audition that I did last week. So uh, I can't remember if I mentioned that I was going to be auditioning for an orchestra. So uh, the choir that I'm in, the Luminous Ensemble, um, is planning on putting together uh, a chamber orchestra. And uh, Margo, the Margo Rayskin, Dr. Margo Rayskin, uh, asked me if I would be willing to audition for the sectional clarinet part um, because my main instrument is the clarinet. I'm not a singer by trade. <laughs> I, I just get paid to do that most often. Um, anyway, so she asked me to audition. So I decided that I was going to audition. And I decided that I was not only going to audition on the clarinet, but I was going to audition on the bass clarinet. So uh, I'll put up on the screen <laughs> a B-flat clarinet, which is the clarinet that I went through my music degree at UPEI with. Um, and then I'll put a picture up of a bass clarinet so that way you can see the difference. Uh, the bass clarinet is more than twice the size of uh, a regular clarinet and it is just a, a lower end instrument. So um, when... <laughs> When she asked me to audition, I decided, oh, well, if I'm going to take any piece of advice that an old prof told me, uh, David Bork, that if you ever want to audition for something, audition for the more obscure instrument, and that way you have a better chance of getting the audition. So if you're auditioning for clarinet, audition on bass clarinet. If you're going to audition for bass clarinet, audition on the contra bass clarinet. Uh, and I mean, claims that that's how he got his position there at, in the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. So I decided I was going to audition on the bass clarinet. Uh, so for those of you who are not uh, classical musicians and have never gone through an audition process, the way that an audition process works is that, um, generally speaking, speaking <laughs> uh, in a high professional setting, um, it's just... Ex there's a, a set of standard excerpts that you are expected to be able to play and play at any point, right? Um, and what they'll do is um, they'll tell you what to play beforehand and then you just, it's part of the audition sign up process. You find out what excerpts that are expected and um, they have that available for you. Uh, if you're auditioning for a principal spot, um, you will also be asked to uh, perform a short uh, solo piece so that way you can show off your soloistic skills. So that was much the uh, format that uh, the Luminos Orchestra <laughs> audition went, is that uh, Dr. Rayskin, Margot, had uh, listed off a few different excerpts for the clarinet and every other instrument, but in my case, the clarinet to play. Um, and uh, the excerpts are pretty standard. So the uh, technical excerpt was uh, Mendelssohn's, uh, not Bright of Spring, Midsummer's Night Dream, Mendelssohn's uh, Overture for that. Uh, then the Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, it's the clarinet solo as the lyrical piece. And then she had selected a piece from Daphnis and Chloe. Um, Chloe and Daphnis? Daphnis and Chloe. No, 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 that's on your screen. <laughs> Which uh, this particular movement is like, it just, it's on fire. It moves really, really quickly. Um, so, uh, I got to work practicing. So my practice sessions typically ended up being like 70% bass clarinet, 30% B flat clarinet, regular clarinet. Um, so last week, so not two days ago, but nine days ago, so the 25th of March, I did my audition and, uh, well, it went great until it didn't. <laughs> The audition on March 25th, uh, just to set the stage, <laughs> I arrive, I set up both my instruments, I warm up on both of my instruments, um, and once it's time for me to go audition, I go to the proctor and the proctor walks me in. 
So for a blind audition, um, the performer, in my case, me, you aren't allowed to talk. The, uh, since it's a blind audition, uh, the jurors are behind, uh, in this case, literally <laughs> behind a sheet. So that way you can't see the person that's performing. Uh, so that way, ideally, there is no judgments about race, gender, expression, any of those things. You're only judging somebody based on their live performance. So I walk in with the proctor and the proctor announces that number three has arrived. And I turned it to be number three even though I was the first person to audition. Anyway, uh, so I sit down, put my horn down, because I'm holding two horns, a stand, my music. Um, like I'm completely filled with <laughs> anxiety as well as my hands are full. Um, so I set the bass clarinet down. Um, I put my little clarinet on the, uh, the stand because there's another section of the stand for my little clarinet. I put my music on the stand. And after I get situated, um, I hear from behind the curtain, Margot saying, you may begin with the Mendelssohn. So the Mendelssohn's on the little clarinet. So I pick up my little clarinet. And since I am, uh, like that was the last instrument that I had like played, I was ready to play it. So I just took a breath, <laughs> remembered how I wanted to play it and then played. Uh, so it worked w quite well. I I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I flubbed one line, which I have been flubbing up a lot, but um, I only flubbed a little bit. It didn't derail the, the um, excerpt. <laughs> I, just, I just played it and, you know, once it was done, it was done. Pretty good. Um, I played in tune. I didn't squawk. None of those things that I have to normally worry about. Uh, so after a moment or two, Margot uh, asks me to play the Berlioz, which is also on the little clarinet, uh, and it's the lyrical piece. So uh, I pride myself on being a lyrical player, so being able to play slow stuff beautifully, um, at the risk of sounding conceited, is something that I find easy to do. It's playing fast technical stuff I find really difficult, so I have to really work on it. Um, I have been told I lack finesse, <laughs> but I have good instincts when it comes to music. Hey. Anyway, um, so I played the Berlioz, and um, once I let my nerves run away from me, um, and I leaned into the acoustics of the church, we, the, the audition was inside a, a small sanctuary. Um, uh, since I had played in this church before, it was actually the church that I played my senior and junior recitals in college, um, I was able to like let loose a little bit and like lean into the reverb and just, you know, remember all of those like little nuances that I uh, tried to work out in the practicing before. And I probably played the best I've played <laughs> in a decade. Like I felt like it went really, really well. I'd give myself a 10 out of 10. Like I had no major squawks. I had no tempo issues, I didn't have rhythm issues, like I played that as flawlessly as I am capable of playing something. Uh, <laughs> so I was really, really proud on that. Um, so then the next step is the sight reading portion. So Margot uh, tells me that, you know, off to the side there is a uh, an excerpt on another stand that I couldn't see from where I was sitting um, and to, you know, go and play that for her and to take your time. So I look at the music, it says cantabile, which means song-like. So, I, and no other tempo marking. So I'm like, oh, I can play this slow. Is there anything hard I need to look at? And there's a sextuplet. Uh, so I looked at that, fingered through it, and then I played it. And I, it, it went pretty well. <laughs> it went pretty well. Um, I'd probably give myself a eight or nine out of 10 on my sight reading. Great so far, right? So, uh, on that, I go and sit down, get my bass clarinet out, ready to play, and then I hear from behind the screen, thank you. <laughs> As in, you're done, <laughs> your audition is now over. Uh, so in that moment, uh, which felt like an eternity, but it was probably only like five or six seconds, um, I was like, but I haven't played the bass clarinet part yet. Do I stay, do I go? I worked too hard on this. <laughs> Uh, so then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take the chance. I can play this well. I, I've been playing it really well, and it, I sound it really good, despite the issues I'm having with the bass clarinet, because it's uh, the university's horn. It needs some work. 
Um, so, uh, in the rush of uh, adrenaline that I had, being anxious about the audition and the uh, and the uh, risk that I was going to take, uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to play it. So what I should have done, <laughs> what I should have done in that moment is played a few notes on the horn and then went into it. But in my adrenaline, I just decided to play. Um, so when I started to play, instead of it coming out, da -da 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 -dum, it came out. <laughs> Um, and then I got flustered. <laughs> and then I, forgive my friends, shat all over the excerpt. I, I played it so poorly. It was so sloppy. And then at the very end where it's supposed to like show off like the low end of the horn, um, I somehow was able to like bridge the huge jump between the top and the bottom of the horn. Um, but the bottom part, like it repeats itself. So it goes bomb, 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 bomb. When I got to the second one, I decided to go bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> so <laughs> after I played that, I was just like, oh, didn't say anything, just just sighed. And then I heard from behind the 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 um, the uh, the the she, Margot. Clearly stifling a little laugh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I cringed about that for about a week. For about a week. Um, and, uh, yeah. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I was so all over the place about that audition because, like, the first part went really well. Had I just walked out when she said thank you the first time instead of being stubborn and playing the bass clarinet part, um, I feel like it would have been no brainer, like a shoe in. Like I still don't know the uh, results of that. Um, uh, apparently, uh, there was eight or nine people that were supposed to audition that day, but a number of people had COVID, so they couldn't audition. Um, so I won't hear back until everyone has auditioned for that particular that particular day um so uh, i probably won't hear back for another week or so but um yeah now i'm like <laughs> especially at the time i'm since i'm a little bit further far removed from it i'm more okay with it uh but like that night uh <laughs> i was both happy and bummed out and uh, i was a little defeat it's not quite the right word but like uh, like my my mood was swinging between being really happy with how the audition went until I remembered where I had taken and botched the risk that um, uh, I, I took by playing the bass clarinet part without being prompted. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I've been cringing about that for a little while, and uh, yeah, it's just one of those things, right? <laughs> so we'll we'll see, we'll see uh, if I get the part. Um, when I went to rehearsal uh, Thursday night for the choir, um, Margot didn't mention anything. I didn't ask her anything because I felt that might have been unprofessional. And Margot's also serving as the chief negotiator for the uh, UPEI Faculty Association, um, which uh, as of time of recording and likely at time of <laughs> this going up on April 3rd, uh, they the faculty at UPEI is, is striking. They've been striking for about two weeks at this point. Um, and she is the chief negotiator for the faculty association. So because she has been going back and forth with trying to uh, set a new time for more negotiations, uh, so that way the strike can end and everyone can go back to work and all of that. Um, like her, her attention has been split amongst a, month, a number of different things. So I don't blame her for not wanting to uh, share with me what she thought or uh, even decide <laughs> who is going to get the part. Um, I feel like th I probably will get a... Uh, I feel like I'm probably going to get a 
like one of the alternate parts. So like I may not be like the sectional clarinet, but if a third or fourth horn is needed, I'll probably be the shoe in for that, assuming that it's not needed for the choir. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll keep you updated on that. <laughs> Hopefully by the next main full podcast, uh, I'll have uh, an answer for you either way. <laughs> um, yeah. So getting into the podcast proper, um, today is, uh, works in progress episode, which, I, uh, the last five have been works in progress because I haven't finished anything, uh, for a little while. Um, but I am making some progress, so I am still working away at the Silphi Jacket by Helen Anderson. Um, and, uh, these are the balloon sleeves, so I'm at a point where, like, the balloon part of the sleeve is all done. It's hard to show, like, how big these sleeves really are. Um, <laughs> I should have saved it, but I sent a Snapchat to Jesse of me wearing this on my head last week. Uh, on my day off. Uh, while she was at work, I sent her a Snapchat while I was working on it. Um, I was only about here, um, which I guess, yeah, I was only, I'd say about like where I've folded it. That's where I've, where I was when I put it on my head. Um, so what I've been doing this week is just like working on the decreases. And now that I'm actually decreased all the way for this particular sleeve, well, both of the sleeves, um, I'm just really just purling straight until I uh, am ready to join it to the body. Um, uh, and to be perfectly honest, um, I'm ready to be finished with this project. Um, like, I think that the bluebells are really cute. Um, I think that the cardigan is gonna be really nice once it's done. Um, like, I like the yarn, I like how it feels, I like all of that. I'm just really, I'm really bored <laughs> with purling. Um, and, uh, I, like, I've been struggling quite a bit with mo- with a lack of motivation, uh, this past week or so. Uh, partially because of my flubbed- flubbed audition, partially because, um, uh, like, the projects that I've been working on, I've been working on them for a really long time. I think this, like, it is- the time of recording, it's April 2nd, so I'm recording it the day this is- before this is going up. Um, April 2nd, this is still, uh, since New Year's, I haven't started any new projects. I've only been working on projects that I've finished. And I think that's the longest I've gone without starting a new project. Um, and I think, like, I think there's a part of me that just wants to do something new. Um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't necessarily say that because I did start, um, I did start spinning something. Um, but I haven't started any new knitting projects. And I'm just at a point in both of them where, like, when it comes to the two main ones that I'm working on, the Silphi jacket and the Raga sweater, I'm on the part of the project that I dislike doing the most. I, like, out of every part of doing a sweater or a cardigan or something that has sleeves, the sleeves are the part that uh, I dislike doing. Um, I don't know if it's simply because I'm knitting a tube and it just gets smaller or bigger depending which way I'm starting it. Um, and it's just I find it... It's not very invigorating. It's not the right word. It's not very exciting. <laughs> um, and I have promised myself that I need to finish at least one project before I start anything else. Um, so I've been working quite, I've been working quite hard at this. I've been putting a lot of long hours into it. Um, I'm just, I'm so close to being finished with these sleeves that like I'm hitting that like 90% barrier where I get 90% through a project and I just, I don't want to look at it anymore. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping I can push through that here. Um, and by hoping, um, that's my nice way of saying that I'm, it's either that I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to push through it and start enjoying it again, or I'm going to hate every moment. <laughs> um, but I'm going to push through, uh, this lack of motivation that I'm feeling right now. Um, yeah, and see where that takes me. Um, this motivation, lack of motivation rather, has been carrying through to like the podcast, honestly, um, because I have recorded and uh, yeah, I have recorded um, a couple of clips of me working on the lace wings uh, uh, 
shawl so I have a pick I have like some b-roll of me like working on knitting and just pattern like transferring and I have uh, just like close-ups of my hands just knitting at it um, I recorded like the actual like over talk <laughs> whatever you want to call it like the voiceover that's it the over talk the voiceover um, I also recorded a tutorial on how to um, do uh, one by one cableless uh, cabling. Uh, so like doing like false twists and all that. Um, I have all that shot. <laughs> I have this pot at episode shot, um, but I just, I've been lacking the motivation to sit down at the computer and edit the videos. Um, I, I know in my head that like, all I need to do is sit down in an hour per episode, I'm done. But I just, for whatever reason, I can't bring myself to do it. Um, so this episode, when it goes live, uh, it'll probably be fairly, fair, like minimally edited, just so that way I can get it out. Because out of all of the other videos that I'm putting out on the channel, most integral <laughs> to putting out uh, is like the main podcast, like the week to week or every, the bi-weekly podcast, uh, making sure that that goes out on time. Um, so I'm going to push through and get that done. Um, whether or not I include the tutorial that I have already shot today in today's, uh, episode, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how I'm feeling. Um, I'll probably film a bumper for it. Um, and then cut it out if I don't, if I do decide not to, or just put it on the screen, I'm going to skip it or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just been, you know, struggling with a little bit of motivation. Um, it might just be fatigue from, you know, doing the same thing um, every day. It could be uh, election fatigue because PEI is going through a provincial election here. Uh, if you're watching this on the day that it goes up on April 3rd, today is our, uh, uh, our provincial election and uh, for the area that I'm registered to vote in, I'm not excited about any of the candidates. Um, I'm kind of feeling like this is an election where I'm going to be voting against candidates as opposed to voting for a candidate, which does not make me excited. Um, uh, there has been some less than ideal news come out about a couple of the candidates as well as uh the current premier and looking at the polls who will, who will likely continue to be our premier um uh but i'm gonna not gonna get into too much politics there but uh like just some things that have made me discouraged <laughs> about uh like the social climate that's here in prince Edward island so um yeah like i i yeah and when it comes to work, like it, it feels like, like since I'm still working at Belfast Mini Mills, <laughs> uh, like it's just more of the, it's kind of like the monotonous kind of work that I'm doing. It's this past week really feels like um, I was only playing catch up a week, um, doing custom work. Um, and, you know, at the back of my mind, just trying to find something for my employee to do. Um, so that way, uh, I don't continue to get swamped like I was for the last couple weeks. So I'm hoping that, uh, over the next few days, um, I'm able to recover some of my lost motivation and figure out something to do. Um, so yeah, just, just one of those things. I kind of just, truth be told, I just want to take a day and, you know, <sighs> play some video games, forget about the world for a minute. <laughs> Uh, cause it's just, I feel like these past few weeks, it's just been, I've been going full tilt. I haven't been taking, um, really any time for myself. Um, so I might do that. We'll see. <laughs> uh, there has been one bright, there has been one or two bright, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. There has been a couple bright spots of my, uh, week though. Um, something that I've always wanted to do but because of like how forgetful I am and how uh well like I've always like joked that I have a black thumb um I have been like I've always wanted to have plants 
<laughs> and I've always wanted, I've always wanted to have plants and I, I want to be good at taking care of plants. Um, so my good friend, Sam, um, is very, very good with plants and, uh, they have encouraged me, uh, <laughs> and, uh, made me feel encouraged to try my hand at a couple of things. Um, so I got a succulent, which apparently they're impossible to kill. <laughs> and you might notice in the frame I've got an orchid here on my desk. I'm hoping a little bit of color and um, having something that I need to take weekly care of in the case of my orchid, monthly care of when in case of my succulent, to try to like break up the monotony a little bit, <laughs> see what I need to do there. Um, yeah, so uh, we we took care of that. We went to Home Depot and Kent and bought a couple of plants, a couple of pots. Um, so now I've got uh, I got my little <laughs> my little orchid here, and I've got a succulent over in the corner. Um, I don't really know where I'm going with that one. <laughs> just just wanted to share something that brightened my week a little bit. That's unrelated to music, unrelated to work, unrelated to knitting um, or crochet. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, despite how short and sweet it was. Um, and a little bit of a downer, I'm sorry for that. We'll, we'll try to come up with something a little bit more uh, bright and cheery next time. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, give the rating of... Today's rating, I'm going to say it's uh, uh, 1.75 sleeves um, out of two sleeves for the, the cardigan here. Because I'm, I think I'm like eight centimeters away from uh, joining it to the body. So I'm pretty close. Just um, need to find that motivation. <laughs> I, I rate this episode uh, zero out of one motivation. <laughs> uh, well, if you think I'm the worsted, uh, comment down below. Uh, give me some tips on how you get your mojo back when you've lost some of your motivation. Uh, if you like today's video, give me a thumbs up and share with all your friends. I'll see you in a couple weeks.